Hello friends, myself, Dr. Atul Pradhan, Assistant Professor, School of Agriculture, Sage University, Bhopal. Friends, today we will discuss about one of the topic from crop improvement that is plant genetic resources part first. So friends, in this topic, First of all, we have to understand that what is plant genetic resources. So, it is the sum total of hereditary material that is all the alleles of various genes present in a crop species and its wild relatives. So, we can also refer to as the whole library of different alleles of a uh, species and definitely it is one of the basic material for a breeder uh, with which breeder can initiate the program. So this plant genetic resources is also called as the germplasm and this germplasm can range from collection of wild species to elite domesticated breeding lines that have undergone extensive human selection. So this germplasm is can be collected from various uh, sources such as uh, center of diversity, maybe gene banks, maybe gene sanctuaries, farmer fields, maybe markets or maybe the seed companies. So this is about the plant genetic resources or the germplasm. And this plant genetic resources or germplasm is also called as the genetic stock or gene pool. So depend on the various types of germplasm or plant genetic resources, they may be classified on the basis of various aspects. So uh, first that is depending on the state of their domestication. So domestication on the basis of domestication, they are classified into cultivated germplasm and wild germplasm. So this cultivated germplasm means this is under the human intervention or they can be cultivated. And the second that is the wild germplasm means with which we are not cultivating or the human is not cultivating only we are using this wild germplasm for transferring of desirable genes from the wild to the cultivated one. <coughs> second on the basis of the place of their origin. So first one that is the indigenous germplasm that which is from the country only and second one that is the exotic germplasm that we can from export uh, or import we can import from other countries also. So this is about the classification of this plant genetic resources. Now there are uh, various kind of germplasm uh, which we are using in the crop improvement. So they may be land races they may be absolute cultivars, they may be modern cultivars, they may be advanced breeding lines, wild relatives or wild forms, special genetic stocks or the mutants. So we will discuss this various kinds of germplasm one by one. So first one that is the land races. So this land races, these are nothing but the primitive cultivar which was selected and cultivated by the farmers for many generations. These land races were not uh, deliberately uh, bred like modern cultivars and these land races even respond to selection of higher yield under certain extent. So these land races definitely have the high level of genetic diversity which provides them with high degree of resistance to biotic and abiotic stresses but have low stable yield. So this land dresses definitely have the progenetic base and can again provide the wider adaptability and protection from various species and insects. So the variation found in this land dresses is present in both within and between such varieties. But the only drawback of this land dresses is that they are not uniform and low stable yields. Second, that is the absolute cultivars. 
So these absolute cultivars, these are nothing but the improved varieties of recent past. And these varieties which were popular earlier and nowadays these varieties or these cultivars has been replaced by the new varieties and the hybrids. So uh, some of the examples which is given here that is the K68, K65 and PB591. Uh, these were uh, some of the traditional tall varieties uh, before introduction of high yielding dwarf Mexican wheat varieties. And this uh, popular traditional varieties, these were having the various quality characters and they were also having the um, good chapati making. So nowadays these varieties are no more cultivated and we can found these varieties in the gene pool only. So this is about the absolute cultivars. Next that is the uh, modern cultivars. So in the picture itself, uh, you can find one of the variety that is the Pina Dhan 1, Dhan 11. So, which is one of the popular modern cultivar from the Odisha state. So, what is modern cultivar? So, these are nothing but the currently cultivated high-yielding varieties which are referred to as the modern cultivars. So, definitely these varieties or these modern cultivars, they have high yield potential. Their uniformity is also high as compared to the absolute varieties and land races and this modern cultivars constitute the major part of the working collections and they are extensively used uh, as parents in the breeding program and this modern cultivars are also known as the improved cultivars or the advanced cultivars uh, they have highly homogeneous uh, they have high genetic variability and uh, only the drawback is that they have narrow genetic base and low adaptability as compared to the land races. So this is about the modern cultivars. Next kind of germplasm that is the advanced breeding lines. So uh, this advanced breeding lines, these are the pre-release plants which have been developed by the plant breeders for used in modern scientific plant breeding and these advanced breeding lines are also known as the advanced lines, cultures and stocks. So this includes advanced cultivars which are not yet ready for release to the farmers. Means before releasing to the farmers or before um, taking to the farmers, these are the lines which are the pre-released. And this group includes uh, nearly homozygous lines, uh, mutant lines, Maybe the lines derived from the biotechnological programs include transgenic lines. And they have ordinarily maintained as working collection by breeders. <laughs> Next kind that is the about maybe the wild form of cultured species and wild relatives. So first of all, we will discuss about the wild form of cultivated species. So wild form uh, are wild species from which crop species were directly derived. Means they are easy to cross with the concerned crop species and they can be easily crossed. And second thing that is about the wild relatives. So these are the naturally occurring plant species which have common ancestry with crops and can cross with crop species and definitely they are much more difficult to cross than the wild forms with the concerned crop species. Means both these wild forms and wild relatives constitute a small part of the gene pool and this wild relative they may be used as a last resort in crop improvement program because their using in crossing leads to hybrid sterility leads to hybrid inviability, leads to transfer of undesirable genes with the along with desirable genes. So both these wild forms and wild relatives constitute minor gene pool or small part of gene pool. The only difference in the wild forms and wild cut relatives that these wild forms can be easy to cross with the concerned crop species while the wild relatives may or may not easy to cross with the concerned 
crop species and both of these groups have generally high degree of resistance to biotic and abiotic stresses and definitely they can be utilized in breeding program for genetic improvement of resistance to biotic and abiotic stresses. The next kind of germplasm that is the spatial genetic stocks. So this genetic stocks include the lines which can carry gene mutations, which can carry chromosomal aberrations or may be developed using the marker genes. And these lines may have been obtained spontaneously or often induced artificially. So in the picture, we can, show, we can see that this was either some of the tomato lines which can be used for the food medical test and they are developed by genetic modification. And some of the examples for the special genetic stocks may be the set of monosomic lines or trisomic lines. And the last that is about the mutants. It is one of the kind of germplasm. So mutants, they may be natural or they may be artificial through physical or chemical agents. So this mutation breeding is used or the mutants which we can use when the desired character is not found in genetic stock of cultured species and the wild relatives. So these mutants of or mutants having various characters may not be released as a variety, but they can add it into the gene pool. Some of the example that is the mutant gene pool DGV gene in rice and Norintain in wheat. So these are nothing but the valuable genetic resources which used for the development of high yielding and semi-dwarf varieties of the respective crop species that is of rice and wheat respectively. So these are various types of or various kinds of germplasm which we have discussed here. It may be mutant, it may be land race, it may be absolute cultivars, modern cultivars, advanced breeding clients, wild forms, wild species. So this is it. In the next lecture or in the part second, we will discuss about the various activities regarding the germplasm and which are related to the plant genetic resources. So thank you friends and stay tuned and subscribe to Sage University Bhopal. Thank you again.